Sure. So we have a lot to talk about. Yeah, we do. Yeah. Got some lab work. You be taking some lab work. Why don't you go? What do you think about your lab work? <laughs> well, for those watching, I got my, I've been getting my thyroid labs done every couple of weeks or more. Um, and so I just got those done and my TSH, which up to this point in this whole adventure has been very, very low, if not undetectable, it was now in the high range. So just jumped right past that normal range <laughs> into the red high range. So that's a good thing that, you know, my body's working through all of that thyroid hormone and my pituitary gland is, you know, having to keep things going now. So the good news is that hopefully that means that my medication can go down and we can, you know, work towards that. Um, my T3, free T3 and free T4 were still in the normal range, but getting towards the low end of the normal range. So I'm headed towards hypothyroidism, uh, which I don't, don't want to go to. I'm still waiting for my doctor to give me the go ahead on like exactly what to do with the medication. Um, so I, hopefully I'll hear from her in the next day or two. Um, so that was interesting. What do you, what do you think about the thyroid stuff? No, so actually I'm really excited about your levels. So there's a couple things that I think are really interesting is the things that we should pinpoint. And I think if people are kind of out, of, I'll explain a little bit, but if people are out of context, we really need to go back and we need to look at, you know, the first video we had talking about uh, progesterone, estrogen, iron connections, thyroid connections, things like that. Because what I love about your labs, um, and maybe you can put some screenshots up on the video so they can see what we're talking about, is not only did your TSH go back up and your T4 and T3 are within healthy ranges, meaning they're becoming stable, your estrogen came down to a, to a lower level during this period, your testosterone up, it's great, your progesterone's more leveled out, your LH and FSH both went up to healthy levels. I mean, uh, remind me, I should remember this, but how old are you again? 40. Just turn 40. 40. You don't look a day over 25. <laughs> um, but you have amazing testosterone levels for a woman. Okay. Your age. Amazing. Right. Amazing. Really, truly. You amazing. Muscle. Yeah, absolutely. Your hormones have all balanced out everything. Your SHB went down. Your cortisol came down to a normal range. Like you are like, you are getting leveled. Wow. Which is amazing. That is amazing. So for those watching, I actually didn't plan to get my hormones tested again because we had just gotten them done, what, like two months ago. It was two months ago. Yeah. And it just so happens that the day I got my lab work done was day eight of my cycle. And that's exactly the same day of my cycle that I got it done two months ago, <laughs> which was like, it was just totally random that way. So we were able to compare those. Um, and yeah, I was, I did, I don't really know much about hormones so i was really curious to hear your thoughts on because it did change it wasn't exactly the same but to hear that it's all going good is amazing yeah for me this shows me that what we've been doing is working these are the kind of things that, so normally i wait 90 days mm -hmm. but things can happen within 60 for sure especially yeah. medication can help advance those things right that's where like as much as we love the dog on western medicine that's this is a moment where they do shine a bit um yes. just to give credit right we have to give credit where credit's due we're not we're, we're not we're being too biased um but yeah this just shows the nutrition protocol is working like what you're doing is working you're you're actually like in real time healing with on that i kind of i want to hear i want to i want to hear you talk about this i could get excited all day but let's talk about them ferritin levels yeah my ferritin was on this test uh, 107 so still over 100 after the infusion I got was what? It was right before we started working together. So what, like four months? It was a long time ago. So I, in the last two years, my ferritin has not stayed in a healthy level, even after infusions for this long. And I'm like, I'm totally blown away. Like obviously something that we're doing or that I have done, like the gut health stuff, the hyperthyroidism stuff, like something in all of that has is making a difference so it absolutely is and i think okay and this is where it's important like i think it's important to understand that this is a, this is a layered compound effect meaning like i'm not going to sit here and say the pro the pro the nutritional protocol i had you on is the reason that you're healing right it's not it's it's helping but it's helping because of the baseline that you've created over the past couple of years fixing your gut 
getting infusions in the first place, knowing you needed them, um, looking at your thyroid, getting that handled, and on top of that, doing a, a, a nutrition protocol and ratios that seem to work really well for your body. Those yeah. things compounded is what works. And I think that's one of the things that people need to look at is they usually get fixated on an isolated metric. Like, oh, I just need to get enough protein. Or I just need to get enough fat or just enough carbs. Or I need to I need to fast more. I just need to do more red light. They get really focused on an isolated metric. And that can be good for N equals one experiments. But you have to realize when you're dealing with something that's hormonal in nature, like a thyroid or sex hormones, or even like blood related, what makes that stable is not just one isolated thing that you change. It's doing all the right things that compound over time. It's that it's that one it's it, it's it's that one step over and over and over again that leads to true healing. And you've cre you you have created that environment. So kudos yeah. kudos to you, Jonathan. If I just had one thing, it would make a really good viral video. This one thing fixed my ferritin. <laughs> that should be the title of this video. There you this go. The title of this video. Right. All right, let's say it's gonna go viral. Yeah. Oh, it's gonna blow up. They're like, what? This, and then it turns out this one thing is everything combined. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> oh goodness. But yeah, I, in terms of your body, dude, you are you're ready. I, so I, I didn't. If you notice, I didn't give you running yet. It's because I didn't want to give you any running scheduling until we got your labs back. Okay. I think you're completely ready to start training for something. I think your body's in the right spot. That being said, so this is, and you let me know how you feel about this. So some some clients I find that they, you know, can do strict carnivore, cool. Keto, we've already talked about all that. Now, they're, now when it comes to like cycling and carbs for healing, I find that some women can do low carb and then they can get back into carb cycling and that seems to work well for them. I'm pretty convinced that like that 75 to 80 grams a day range for you i don't think you need to sway with that i think that should be a constant for you i think based off of your your labs and based off of how you're feeling right now yeah we didn't no talk reason about to change it. yeah but i'm feeling amazing yeah there's no reason to change anything and i'm not worried about your weight your weight's been relatively stable you're hitting the same low yeah, um, I think that's just the TSH is really high. I think once once that gets stable, I'm curious. What did your? You, I know your doctor talked about. Uh, you said that once she sees those numbers, she might lower it. Did she? She hasn't yet. I'm still waiting to hear back from her after getting the results because I just got the results. Gotcha. So, okay. It's a few okay. days to get back to me. So um, on that though, I I'm not worried about your weight right now. Um, I did lower your macros starting today to meet that 1800. You kind of you kind of talked to me about. Yeah, yeah. So for anyone watching, I messaged Jonathan the other day about <laughs> it's blowing my mind that my appetite has just gone to zero almost, uh, especially after coming from eating you know 2500 calories and still feeling like it wasn't enough and you know losing weight on top of it. And then now like my, my appetite has just gone to zero and it's just this huge contrast. And so I've been trying to hit my macros that, you know, you gave me last week, um, which is about 21, 2200. And I felt like I couldn't even do it, which is, blows my mind. So anyways, yeah, the, my appetite has gone with the adjustment of the uh, thyroid hormones. Uh, my appetite has just gone out the window. Yeah. And this is honestly a great example of that debacle that we always hear like the calories versus hormones your story is a big example of why both matter like yes. understanding that both matter like because think about it so somebody that doesn't know the things you know they would let's say that they were eating 2500 they were losing weight right and they stopped losing weight at 2500 and they went down to 2000 and they still weren't losing weight right because you're not losing weight and you're eating like 18 1900 calories okay mm -hmm. That person not knowing anything about hormones will go, but I'm in a deficit and I'm not losing weight. That would be the statement. But yeah. the reality is, is that, and then someone would say, no, it's just your hormones. Calories don't matter at all. And they would fix their hormones. They would start losing weight. Oh, so if my horn, you know, so like calorie, I can still get weight and get out calorie deficit. And it's like, that's not true. What was happening was hormonally, metabolically, your body was downregulated or upregulated. And so what used to be a deficit or a surplus is no longer that thing that it exactly. was. And so understanding that like both of these have an intricate role with each other and they're both true. Like, I think that's the biggest issue in that space. And we don't have to go down that rabbit hole today, but like a lot of people, it's it, they're pitted against each other. Like one is either true or one's not. And it's, it's seeing 
that they can both, they're both true at the same time. Yes. And then another layer that gets in there is just like uh, your, your awareness of yourself or, you know, like the shame piece of it where it's like, I shouldn't be eating 2,500 calories. Like, and so I look at my calories, I'm like, I'm overeating because everyone knows that's too much. And then, you know, you try to push the calories down. And obviously at that point, my body needed that much. Like that, that's what it was asking for. That's how much I needed. And I, and even more maybe, because I did lose a little bit of weight. And so like that, our, our mental side of it too, can just get wrapped up in there. Like I, I, there's something wrong with me that I'm, I'm a glutton and eating all of this food. And you're like, well, actually your body, the hormonal state that your body was in is, you know, sending you signals. And then as soon as that hormonal state is different, it's like, I don't even think about food. And I'm like trying to force myself to eat more food. And I'm like, what? It had nothing to do with, you know, who I was as a person necessarily. It was, it was hormonally influenced, which is crazy. It's crazy. It's crazy. Yeah. Experiencing really this in such a, a short amount of time has really opened my eyes to a lot of things. Cause you know, I think I've experienced these kind of swings before, but it was so drawn out that I just didn't make those connections. But like, feeling the insatiable hunger and then feeling like so full I can't even think about getting all my macros in just within a couple of months is just mind-blowing yeah and I I can't say that the food didn't change because your food did change a little bit when we started working together there's a little bit more intention with like how much fat protein and carbs you're eating but still even that like it wasn't that dramatic of a change and so just think like because people say oh well you're not eating the right you know you see in the comments like oh you're just not eating enough meat you're not eating enough nutrient dense food for satisfaction Mm -hmm. but yet your satisfaction was completely dictated by your hormone levels yes nothing to do with the food you're eating it was all mechanisms yeah it's like super enlightening yeah totally it's just totally mind-blowing absolutely so here's what i want you to do so i'm going to create a running program for you i know we're shooting for a a 10k in september yeah uh i I was thinking august mid-august august august okay so that's like Uh, eight weeks I want you to try before the end of the week. And if you want to do two, but at least one, I want you to go for like a two mile run at least once before the end of the week. And I want you to email me and let me know how you felt. What's your heart rate do? How did you feel before, during and after? Like, just give me a quick rundown. So I know, I just want to get a snapshot. So I know how to start you off in a way that's um, progressive, but also, you know, meets you where you're at. But yeah, no, everything's going great, girl. I'm super happy with everything. I I am super happy too. Like, I cannot believe my sleep how good it is, my energy, my mental clarity, my motivation for like life. (laughs) It's night and day. It's nuts. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Absolutely. So, okay. So your macros are good. You understand your, your, your goal for this week. Get that back to me as soon as you can. Okay. Um, And then, yeah, we'll go from there. Okay, cool. Okay. And do you have any other questions? Anything else you want to celebrate or talk up through? I don't think so. I think I think that's it. We shared our one thing to fix your ferritin. There we go. The one thing. <laughs> the one thing that counts. Yep. Knowing yourself. Oh. There you go. And then doing it. And, and then doing it. Yeah. <laughs> the knowing is only half the battle. Yeah. Two things. <laughs> yeah. There you go. <laughs> knowing it and doing it. All right. Cool. Well, good job. Congrats. Thank I'm happy for you. you. Just keep me updated, and then we'll we'll keep cracking at it. All right. Awesome. Thank you. Awesome.